What's up boys and girls, Lambo here and today's video will be me teaching you guys how to 12 pull properly. I'm gonna be talking about the build order, the execution of it, different follow-ups, what, what it is good against and which maps it's good at and um, just in general. I will give you guys my thoughts about it. So I'm gonna, I, this, these are three letter replays because I didn't really want to test this out with anyone since I had like a million replays. I actually just checked my replays that I named, so the ones that are in the subscriber replay packs, uh, and took three replays out of those. So if you guys want to have these replays way before I'm making them into videos, make sure to subscribe to me on Twitch. Um, anyways, the build order is, as you guys might be able to imagine, uh, a 12 pool, then we make three drones, and then we make an overlord at 14. And after this overlord spawns, you do not start extra drones, you leave this larva B, and then once the pool finishes, you start four links, a queen, and two more links. So basically you start six links and a queen right away. Now, you guys might be wondering, in ZVZ we put down a hatchery instead of going for the queen first, but the thing is, Protoss usually probe scouts and then they will block your natural, in which case you need to go for the queen instead. However, if he lets you take the natural, you should always cancel the queen and then take the t take the hatchery. Which doesn't hurt you because this queen doesn't slow down anything else. You have the minerals for the zerglings anyways. So we start leaving with a drone at around 1 minute and 5-6 seconds. For two reasons, even if there is a probe. For two reasons. One, a lot of Protoss players will just simply not block this with a pylon. And you're just gonna get the hatch down. Uh, a lot of Protoss players, especially the ones that you're gonna be playing against, might just go into the main base and miss the drone entirely. You can also do fancy stuff like hiding the drone. Uh, in which case you also always should hide the overlord in general. I think on high level you should hide the overlord. I'm gonna tell you guys something entirely different by the way. Uh, I think you guys should go to the natural with the overlord so you don't randomly lose against a guy that goes forge first here and then hides a cannon rush. Um, I, I know you guys by now and <laughs> I think this might be something that you guys might struggle with. So uh, what I usually do is I send my overlord like this a little bit more to the bottom first and then to the other side of the map to hide it and scout for tech. Nowadays, I even sometimes just leave the second overlord at, on my side of the map, but I hide it. You guys don't need to do that. Pretty sure Protosses on lower levels also don't realize that this overlord is way later than a normal overlord, so... Um, they might do this anyways. Now he blocks with a pylon. This is very standard. We now kill the pylon. We kill the pylon, and then we go across. And I want you guys to never just ignore the pylon, if, especially... Um, with 12 pull it's very very important that you get this hatchery up because you don't actually have zergling speed. I do not want you guys to take a third base first and if you just clear it up with the links later on then you don't actually have pressure. Having the, the, the 12 pull itself it's strong with 6 links you can pressure against the 1 zealot but the moment there is 2 zealots out you can't do anything anymore with 6 links and he can delay you forever here, especially if the probe is still alive, he can even make a second pylon if he sees you didn't kill the first one. And then you're gonna have to work with uh, links 7 to 10 forever. So always make sure to clear the pylon. Overall, we're gonna make 10 zerglings. And the moment we, ha we clear this pylon, the moment we can take the hatchery, we take the hatchery. If um, there is no pylon here and the probe is about to block, uh, you, you can delay this pair of zerglings after the queen. Um, to, to take the hatchery a little bit earlier. The same goes with if he doesn't block you at all. So let's say my drone went down here and the probe went a little bit past and then is following me. You cancel the queen, you don't get the fourth pair of links which you can potentially get before the hatchery and instead just get the hatchery down. Getting the hatchery down as early as possible. Very, very important. Build order wise, we're looking at 10 zerglings and afterwards just drones. So I'm not gonna mention that anymore. Don't start an extra queen. You go to 21 supply with one drone and then you start an overlord. And you inject first with the queen in the main base. Now let's take a look at the execution. This is a pretty cool response from Astrea. He is going for the one gate response, which is relatively difficult to pull off on the maps that are good for 12 pulls. So especially it's very hard on, or almost not possible, on Submarine, Lightshade and Jaganatha. Those are the three best maps for 12 pull. So let's take a look at how I'm executing this. I'm sending five Zerglings on the Cyber Core immediately. In general, you guys will have to judge which buildings are exposed. In this scenario, both the cyber core and the gateway are potentially exposed. On the gateway, you, need to, you would need to make sure that uh, I would hit this with many zerglings here. 
and and then have the other zerglings here. So you always want like four between four and six zerglings hitting the actual building and forcing the protoss to come out of the wall. And and then you want at least two zerglings on the other side to intercept the zealot. If it's only one zergling, he can focus fire and get back, and you're gonna lose not only a zergling but also a lot of time hitting the building. The most important part here is getting as much time as possible with these zerglings hitting this. So every single time he moves out of the wall, these zerglings on the right are gonna try to get this around. But do not, and I repeat, do not, if you if you think you might get this around, don't just 1A this, uh, be, behind the zealot, try to get this around. This is the number one mistake that I see people make with 12 -4. Number one, even pro gamers, even I do it. Uh, very frequently when I misjudge the situation. I think the best way for you guys to do it is 12 pull very passively. Uh, now this is a one gate response, so usually you're gonna be able to deal damage, especially on um, one of the three maps that I mentioned. Romanticide also is decent for 12 pull. So one of those four maps, you very often will be able to get damage done. So now he has the second zealot. And all I want you guys to know is that with eight zerglings, you don't really want to fight the two zealots, even if you get this around, so don't start to fight right away, just still fake this round. If you get a full round, that's great, and you can go for it, but if they can start kiting and you only have 8 zerglings, you're gonna lose a lot of zerglings. Preferably wait for 10 until you guys try to go for the engagement. And be very careful, and the most important part is to not lose any zerglings, really. In most scenarios. For you guys, pretty much in every scenario. You guys should not really go for the damage. Okay, now he did a really cool thing here, he created a second wall where he could go into with the zealots. And I couldn't really do a whole lot here anymore. Now, I obviously know when the Adept spawns, it's around 2 minutes and 30. In general, you guys need to know that an Adept takes 30 seconds. 30 seconds to build. Chrono Boost is 50% uh, increase of speed in production. This doesn't mean it's 15 seconds, it's actually uh, 20 seconds. So it's from that 20 seconds, it's a 50% increase. Um, which means one Chrono Boost has the same duration as an Adept. Long story short, usually they're gonna chrono boost out the adept. If they do, it's 20 seconds on the clock for your zerglings to get the hell out of there. And if they don't, it's 30 seconds. And I always would suggest that you leave a little bit before the adept, otherwise it's gonna get free shots and it's still guarded by the ze zealots, right? So he did a nice job here with this extra pylon. And we're just going back here. Even though the cyber core was slightly exposed, we're going back a little bit because uh, the adept is coming out and your opponents will not have an access this early and very often you're gonna see two gate responses which I'm gonna cover a little bit later but there is this one gate response which especially is uh, good on maps with ramps so like on oxide pillars this would be a great response a death arrow obviously because on death arrow you can wall with two buildings so you shouldn't 12 pull on that map um, so yeah that death arrow oxide pillars are not great 12 pull maps am I missing one I don't think so yeah the other the other four are fine uh, oxide is can be semi decent. Pillars is really bad, and Death Hour is also really really bad. So if if you if you want to do it on every map, be my guest. But in general, uh, the three maps are Light Light Shade Submarine and Juggernaut are the best. Now, one thing that you you guys can do, and I do this very often, is I fish with the ten Zerglings if they go for single adapts. I fish for the adapt shade. So I try to position my Zerglings where I know the shade will finish, and I will hide them from the shade. Shades have very little vision, by the way, so... You see you see this amount of vision? I try to hide my Zerglings from this shade. I didn't do it this game, which is fantastic, and this is why he cancelled it, right? Preferably, I should have taken a step to the right, and then tried to catch the shade. You can easily surround an adept with the 10 Zerglings, and he can't really do anything. More, more likely than not, they will try to kite, hit your Zergling, maybe kill one Zergling, get surrounded, and die. Good players will mostly just run and try to juke without even shooting, because every time you shoot, you're gonna get the surround immediately once you're close with the Zerglings. Uh, especially on Jagannatha, I like to stay in the speed zones, because this is where the shades go, and this is where you can catch them. Usually the first shade finishes around here as well, so you can sidestep a little bit and then go first around. As for the transition, I will suggest you guys to get a gas around 2 minutes and 40. Uh, before that, let's take a look at when we make the second queen. Right before the second inject, as the overlord spawns, we start up a second queen. We go for a second inject. I'm a noob, so I'm, I'm uh, not injecting yet. Okay, we did inject. So we inject, we go down. Right before this inject is done, we take a gas. 
this injury should have already spawned. So yeah, t take your guess around uh, around this time, two two thirty eight, two forty something like that. And I actually have very different gas timings for very different responses. But if I would tell you guys one gas timing, it would be this one. Because uh, of two reasons. One, this is not too early, so you don't hurt your um, mineral income as much. And uh, two, you guys will realize that zerging speed is not actually that important early on. And three, you guys don't necessarily need to pull drones off gas after 100, which you need to do if you take an earlier gas. So it's just easier, pretty much. And it still is in time for any of the follow-up glaives. So, so Zergling Speed would still be in time for any of the follow-up glaives attacks, uh, robo all-ins, uh, that kind of stuff. So the moment this hatch respawns, we start a queen at the natural. We should be starting a queen at the natural. This is not the perfect game. I actually just checked the start and then wanted to show this to you guys. Because it's actually a one gate response. Oh no, right. Against against one gate response, if they don't if they don't even have two adepts. What I do actually is I go for double inject, and then I just make drones. And then I take the third hatch around 36. Um which you're seeing right here. This is by the way how you surround the adept. Yeah, every, see, every time he shoots, it's very easy to get this around. So as long as you know, okay, he's gonna shoot now, you just let the Zerglings do their job and A-move them, and you should be fine. And this is a 12 pool where I did zero damage. And you're gonna see that this is entirely fine, even though he went for one of the more greedier openers against the 12 pool. Later on, we're gonna see more, one more war of the safe openers, but in general, I want you guys to not be overly aggressive with the Zerglings. Even though you will be able to just win a lot of games straight up. And honestly, at this point, a lot of it is um, reactive. So I still create the Ring of Vision, so my initial guide obviously still holds true he's making a void ray you can see how late the stargate is especially if they go for two gate response their stargate also will be very very late unless their nexus is super late in which case they went two gas on one base right away which is a terrible terrible build so i can judge based on the nexus timing but in general i just want you guys to know there can't be that early of a stargate so don't make blind spores around this time that's useless um in general, always, especially if you're 12 put, prefer extra queens over spores, and then you should more, more likely than, or more often than not, just have two queens in each base in case there's ever gonna be an oracle, and you should also be able to see it. So now what I'm doing this game is I'm going for max uh, drone production. I probably could have done an, a cryptomer here instead of an inject. Usually, if I would see a two gate response, this is different. And usually if I see many gateway units, this is different. Usually if I see the zealot running out, this is different. I would make a creep tumor, and I would get a third queen way before the hatchery. But because I saw his zealots are at home, he's not going to boosting out the a fourth unit. He's only on one gateway. I try to take my hatchery earlier. I go for a couple extra injects to make more money. And now this is something where you guys know in a lot of guides, I just say, use your brain. And it honestly has a lot to do with logic, but... Uh, I think with 12 pools in general, this type of stuff will come with experience. But for you guys, it's best if I just tell you what to do exactly. Uh, so, in general, I want you guys to more often than not just go for three queens at the very least. Especially if there are two zealots out. If you ever surround the zealots, you can always go for what I'm doing right here, by the way. If you ever kill the zealots, and then, or do any damage past that especially, you don't need extra queens. This this still should have been a creep tumor, by the way. So you inject once here, and then you put a creep tumor. And then you get the third hatch before the third queen, if you ever kill the zealots. If both zealots are alive, I, got, I want you guys to always go for a third queen. <clears throat> so he's, he's taking a third base now, I know that it's void race. And this is pretty much just a standard game at this point. So I, I, I just wanted to show this early game. I'm getting a second gas because my third hatch was later than I would have liked it to. And then I'm just drawing up the mineral lines first. And now the same stuff as always applies. You want to drone up the minerals first, get a safety roach warren, uh, then get extra geysers, then take a forward base, uh, get 60, six drones as early as possible. Scout with the Zerglings on the other side of the map. I just wanted to show you this was basically worst case. Uh, he went for one gate and I did absolutely nothing and we're in a fine position. So you guys more often than not should try to just keep the Zerglings alive so you don't have to build any extra Zerglings, make drones, and um, yeah, just learn to macro smoothly behind it, don't get supply blocked. I think that's one of the very big parts because you need to micro at the same time as doing stuff at home, so 
I know that might be difficult for you guys. So let's head into the next replay where we're going to take a look at a two gate response. All right, so now here we're in the second game, which is going to be a ZVP on light shade. So this is another map that is very good for 12 pool, very short rush distance. The only map that is close in rush distance to submarine. And then the next shortest would be Jagannatha, then the next shortest would be Romanticide. All four of those don't have a ramp leading into the natural, so uh, prime maps for 12 pool, really. Now, one thing that I'm probably going to use later on to clickbait as well is that, in general, if I play uh, against anyone below, I'm going to say 6.4k. But honestly, it might even be a little bit higher. And I 12 pool on any of these maps that are relatively short, I usually get ahead. And that is what makes this 12 pool so strong, is that Protoss players are not maybe used to it, and don't have a super sharp response, which you need in order to be e equal, uh, on equal footings with the Zerg player. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is that if I play this, for example, I, I play this in the early rounds all the time of EPT caps, and I just win with the 10 Zerglings. So I'm going to tell you guys to be careful with the Zerglings, but very often I will still get the wins. But um, in general, I think you guys should learn how to do the follow-up at first and be safe with the 12 pool and stuff. But whenever you see just a Zealot exposed, you can also go for it and kill it. I'm just not going to show the replays because that's not really interesting. Uh, if you guys want to see these scenarios, just watch, watch me play the early rounds of EPT Cups. It happens all the time. I also get buildings very often, but I'm I'm, I'm gonna just show uh, show more standard situations here where they don't get a lot of stuff done, right? So, for example, my opponent here is a um, Polish Protoss player, who is I don't know 6.2k, 6.3k MMR, and he's going for the two gate response. And here we have the first uh, difference. I'm sending my drone out here at 107, like that's around the time where I told you guys between 106, 108, you want to send it down. And then once I have 300 minerals, I take this hatch here. He missed following the drone. I'm pretty sure that was not on purpose. So we take the hatchery here. This is a little bit more economic than going for the queen first. So we cancel the queen. Because this probe wasn't nearby, I even made the fourth pair of links before the hatchery. Very important, actually. These uh, these Zerglings being there earlier matters a little bit more than having the hatch earlier on. If the probe is very close to my drone, instead I would have taken the hatchery first, as I said in the previous game. Now we run across the map. The build order is the same. We always go for 10 Zerglings, no matter what. Um, we go for 10 Zerglings, then once we have the money, we make the Queen. I believe this is after the first 8 Zerglings. And then at 20, again, we make a drone and then an Overlord. And then it looks very, very similar to the thing we did before. And then we also execute this very similarly. So now if you look at the wall, uh, the, it should be very obvious which buildings to go for. You go for A, either this gateway. Gateways have 100 less HP, by the way, than uh, Cybercore, so 50 less HP, 50 shield. I'm just going to call this 100 less HP. So they are easier to kill, um, in general. So sometimes if you're, if you're not sure that you would get the Cybercore, going for the gateway can be, can be also good for that reason, but getting the Cybercore obviously is bigger. So in this scenario, I would be fine with you guys for, with both going for the Cybercore or the gateway. In this case, I'm going for the Cybercore. You also need to... Uh, ob obviously see how much uh, surface area is on these. And now already I see that my opponent pulled probes, which is also a very standard response. So he play he's playing two gate and he pulled probes. And already I know that I need to do literally no damage, but I'm trying to still attack these gateways. Please watch out to not give the Zealot free hits on your Zerglings. So if your Zerglings are trying to attack this, and I know I don't want to fight right now, Rather go back a little bit more than getting the extra damage on the gateways. Uh, taking hits on the Zerglings before you have the 10 will make your actual fight go so much worse. If you actually get the surround. So make sure to not get too many hits on. I also have two hotkey groups. I hope that you guys do the same. Just um, hotkey everything to your main hotkey. And then once you're at the other side of the map, or even beforehand, select 4 and then press Alt and the second hotkey if you guys have two hotkeys. If you guys don't, don't do it, I don't know. Um, preferably do two, two different hotkeys, so I have two different hotkeys of Zerglings. The four that hit the building, maybe sometimes it's five, sometimes it's even six, and then all the other Zerglings that try to go for this round. Because the, the Zerglings that you want to move forth and back are only the Zerglings that are in the main army, whereas the other Zerglings usually should just try to uh, stay on the gateway, unless the Zealot gets way too close, but usually if the Zealot gets way too close, 
For example, if we were over here, the zealot would be here, so we could go in for this around over here. Not the case here, because I just want to bait out some probe kills, and in general I just want to be super safe with the zerglings. So you notice this adapt is not chrono boosted this time, so this adapt is later than the last game. It's gonna be later than 2.30. I saw a probe overextended, so we go in, snipe the probe, and we're back out. And what I show you guys now might be very fascinating, because my opponent went for a normal 2-gate response. He pulled some probes, which is fine. I've seen Koreans do that all the time. And the, you're just gonna be very, very far ahead. Usually, and I'm, I'm just gonna keep going. Here we have, we're having a 2-gate two, two, two response, so immediately I'm um, starting the third queen as the hatchery is done. If I went for queen first, in this scenario, by the way, if I w went queen before hatchery, I would start the third hatchery the moment the second queen spawns in the main base, which usually is a little bit before the uh, natural is done. We again take the gas at 240. In this case, there is no hatchery popping here that we can rally here. I also go for a creep tumor immediately at my natural because it's a two-gate response. Now, my opponent is not actually leaving, but I know he has two adapts earlier, so I want to be able to kite from as far forward as possible against the two adapts. And I even start a fourth queen. And you might be like, okay, this is over defensive, he's not even running out with his zealots, but you guys are gonna see that this is fine. All you need to make sure in these scenarios against the two gates is that you are safe and you don't lose anything. And now I can just take the third hatchery. If his adepts are here, I would take the other third. It's not, not a big deal, honestly. So now around 40 supply, we take the third hatchery. Just take it whenever you feel like you can afford it, naturally, without cutting your dr uh, drone production. So, um, don't force yourself to take an earlier third dash, that's not always good, especially if there are zealots, they can try to deny that and force your queens off creep and then maybe snipe your queens. So just be careful with this. And then again we start speed and I can just leave the drones on gas. Our opponent went for a stalker at home and a stargate. We didn't lose anything so far, and now you can see why this 12 pool is so strong, especially against players that are not at the top level. Their follow-ups are just not that good. They don't know when to produce drones, they don't know when to throw down the nexus exactly, they don't know the exact responses, and we're super far ahead already. This is an amazing position. Usually, just as a comparison, the Zuri overtakes the Protoss at around 40 drones. So, the, the Protoss has like 40 probes when the Zerg has 40 drones, and that's where we start overtaking them. Um, with Glaive, sometimes it's not even that bad if the Protoss has more probes than you have drones while you're defending because your opponent investing, is investing into a tech tree that is not great and you will overmake units and that's fine. But in these scenarios, you're going to be ahead in workers. So especially against 2-gate responses or in general if they pull too many workers, if they delay, delay their nexus a little bit too much. Any of that, if they if they miss their pro production, if they get supply blocked because they're playing against 12 pool, any of that stuff while you're playing a clean early game at home, you're gonna just be ahead. So if you if you play a 12 pool like this and you get good at it, I think it's a fantastic macro opener in general in a lot of maps. And also one thing that I go for is always a safety roach horn relatively early, just in case it is uh, glaives. I also made an extra queen here, just that would be in time for the oracle. So I'm. I'm going for a fourth queen. I cancelled that the, the fourth queen earlier in favor of the third hatchery because I saw that the zealot stayed at home. So again, this is reacting. This is something that you guys need to learn by yourselves. I, ca I can't tell you it's always best to make four queens. It's always best to make three queens. It's always best to make qu two queens because in all honesty, it's different every time depending on what the Protoss is going for. But in general, I want you guys against two gate to get at least three queens. If he's running across the map, immediately four queens. Also, rather over make units and under make units. I'm gonna show a game against max packs in the next one. Where we're gonna take a look at that. Now we have a very similar split uh, with my queens as I showed you guys in the ZVP guides earlier this week. So we have two queens here, two queens here, a third one making here. And overall, we're just uh, happily droning. And macroing up, taking gases after we put uh, after we saturated all the mineral lines. We're playing against an icon drop in this case, so we're making roaches after 66 drones. As I told you in the guide, all of this applies uh, still, and you're gonna see the effects that my lead had in a little bit. 
Because I know that I'm ahead, and I'm just gonna make units and kill him. So, at this moment in time, I am up 70 supply. 70 supply on my opponent. I will have plus one done, Roach speed, and he doesn't even have plus one yet. Okay, ju ju he did, he's not even trying to go for Storm Greedily, he's not trying to get a Robo Bay. Um, we're just up 70 supply because we played in a, a better early game than him. And I hope that's understandable. This is not a build that you need to copy the follow-up after. This is just something that I know to do when I'm ahead. But you guys can play all your styles. If you guys like Lurkers, you guys can go into Lurkers. If you guys like Roach Hydra on a lower level, then just go Roach Hydra. If you guys like Muras, then be my guest and play Mura. I don't really care what exactly you guys are doing. All follow-ups are fine. Just all, all you need to realize is that you still need to drone up uh, mineral lines first. Uh, very often with 12 play I take a second gas earlier because I'm oversaturated because the third base is late, but don't let that discourage you too much. Uh, this also means that this is automatically super good against Glaives, so anyone that like gets uh, 12 put and follows up with Glaives, like, it, it's not the smartest follow-up to do as Protoss, because you naturally are a very good setup against it, because you have to stop at this drone count and you have the money to get a Roach Warren. So in general, Glaives is, I think, one of the worst follow-ups that Protoss can do, uh, especially the, the, the Robo Glaives. I, I've seen people do very weird Glaives. Where they just throw in a Twilight Council and just keep making adapts from the gateways. I thought that that looked kind of cool, but the normal glaives, I'm definitely not a big fan of. So yeah, that's the second example of what to do against two gate. Now let's take a look at a third example where I'm going to be playing against Max Specs in the next replay. Now before I get to the last replay, I just want to tell you guys what to do against one specific response that you no one really does on very high level, besides uh, one legendary Protoss player called Rotterdam, um, which is a forge response. So what if your opponent pylon scouts and reactively throws down a forge, or what if you want to cannon rush and has a forge and a cannon at home? If you guys notice ahead of time, it's actually a blind counter against them to go 12 pull and only make 6 links. You're in a very good position in general. Uh, if you really want a mind game then, you can even go 13 pull or 14 pull and just make 4 links or so, or 6 links, no matter what. Specifically against forge expand, you would like to have as little zerglings as possible, but um, you're not going to see the fact that it is a forge before you make all the 10 zerglings, but that's not that bad. Just make the 10 zerglings, take 3 hatches, you can even delay the gas a little bit more. Um, you, ca you guys can also just play the same build order. Obviously you can go inject and inject at the natural first right away as well. You can get the third hatch up earlier than no matter what, similar to what I showed in the first video, uh, in the first replay rather. So against Forge, just try to get up three hatcheries up as early as possible. The Protoss can't have any early attack either because he went Forge Expand. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just don't try to pressure, just search for the probe. If there's a probe on the map, because your Zygnus don't have anything else to do anyways, if they start to go across the map later on with an adapt, you can again try to surround it because they can't really have two adapts. And um, still try to, uh, try to see if their cannon is too late. So first of all, try to go across. And um, if they full wall, one thing that is a cool tip against Forge Expand. If they full wall and they want to cancel, you can stay close. And then right as they cancel, you can try walking in, maybe forcing a re-wall. Maybe they even finish an entire wall, in which case you're for sure in a good position. So against Forge Expand, similar to how it is when they just stay on one gate and have an extra pylon in the wall, you can try to get up a third hatchery as early as possible. Although with the one gate expand, if they have multiple zealots, they can still run across the map with two zealots and a uh, little bit delayed to it up. So you should still go for three queens against Forge Expand. Always take a third edge on two queens. That's all I wanted to say. Let's head into the next replay. All right, now here we are in the last replay. This one is going to be against Max Specs, and he does a very weird opener. And I actually was AFK this game, which kind of forced me into going into a 12 pool. Uh, <laughs> this is also why my overlord started moving very late. Uh, I guess I, one thing I didn't talk about too much yet is what your overlord should do, it's on the other side of the map. I think you can hide it somewhere around this area on, on every map, and then go into the main base. Very often they won't have a stalker. You can also just leave it on the ledge and look what spawns at the front, I think that's cool too. On maps like Jagannatha, where this is not safe. Or actually only on Jagannatha, <laughs> where this is not safe, this is not the greatest, but... You might do this a lot on Jagannatha since I said it's a good map for it. So now Max Specs blocks us, and again, you want to attack this with every Zergling. You do not want to let the last couple of Zerglings try to clean this up. 
and you need to make sure that the probe is taken care of and is not be a is not able to throw down a pylon um, until the hatch is down. So if I just killed this pylon and then went to the other side of the map and then he puts a pylon down, game is over. I would leave. That's terrible. So don't do that. Make sure to get the hatchery down. And now this is actually one of the games where I executed the 12 foot very poorly. So it, I think it's, it's nice to show one, one of the games where it goes very bad. And how it still can be good, because a Protoss does a bad follow-up. Um, uh, okay, so let's see here. We do this again. We have the four Zerglings here hitting the gateway. Could also do on the Cybercore. And he's actually doing something very weird, he's going for three Zealots. So now I think I think he's leaving a little bit too far. I think, by the way, you, you should just leave the Zerglings here. Uh, th these are a little bit old replays, so I started just hitting the other gateway as well then, and going back if the Zealot goes towards here, and then hit the gateway again, so I can try to sneak my way in there with the Zerglings. I think this is the better way of doing it. And now I see the Zealots are exposed, so I try to get us around, and I barely don't get it. And I lose two Zerglings. That's a disaster. Losing two Zerglings and killing nothing is an absolute disaster. So now I have to go back, and I see that there are three Zealots. So now what do I do? First of all, I make the extra Queens as early as possible, because Queens are very important. Second of all, I know his Nexus is very late. So we see two extra Queens. I also delay my gas, because I know I don't want gas mining right now. In this specific scenario, if you guys get your gas at 240, not the biggest of deals. Um, but you should go at the very least for four queens. If you want to go gasless, by the way, one thing you can do is you can take double gas at three minutes if you prefer that for some reason. Uh, if you really like having earlier speed, you can go for first gas at like 220 and then you have your speed a little bit earlier. So those are two other gas timings that I would suggest. Or like at three minutes, 10 double gas, something like that. So you're seeing that I'm uh, making new extra zerglings. And the amount of zerglings that you want, especially against this two zealot and two adept poke, really is just um, uh, 12 zerglings against especially two zealots and two adepts. 12 zerglings, so you can make one extra pair of links to be super safe. I think even 10 is usually enough because you can kite back with the queen, so you can attack, kite, attack, kite, or hit and run, hit and run. And then once the adepts are on creep, uh, very often you can surround them with the zerglings actually very very easily uh, but you need to make sure to al also follow the shade so if he doesn't shade if he wouldn't have shaded here already and i would already have the 12 zerglings i would go for the surround and focus fire the depths with the queens that would be the way i micro it but the safest way for you guys to do this if you're about at judging in general is follow the shades with four zerglings per adapt so there are two adapts that are shading into our main base which makes this two times four is eight exactly chat well done. I'm actually not talking to Twitch, I'm not sure why I called you guys chat. Well done, YouTube comments. <laughs> and yeah, now I made some extra zerglings because he has three. Three zealots, so I made actually 14. And now I have the three queens at the bottom, one queen in the main, very, very standard. And now I'm just joining up. And he even rallied a third adapt across. I went for a scout. He doesn't have any tech yet. I know he doesn't have anti-air. Even if you lose this uh, to a Stalker, you already know his tech is even later. Uh, Protoss has a very limited amount of gas, I can show you guys this. You guys can see this in the three replays. All the replays, by the way, as always, are going to be in the description below. I'm taking my second gas. I don't mind taking a later third here at all. And the reason for that is simple. We're again ahead on workers. Now he actually shades in and we made some extra links to be super safe. We get this around, we kite forward here with the queens, ending up getting one of the adepts, and we're insanely far ahead now. Actually insanely far ahead. One thing I got relatively late was the Stroach one, usually I get it a little bit earlier, I just forgot. And he's going for some very weird robo build. And obviously the queens are good at defending that too. I know that it's not possible for him to have DTs or anything like that. The gas just doesn't add up. But if you're unsure, just make some sport crawlers. Just play it safe. So overall, we're in a fantastic position. We have a very good drone count and he's on two base. Not even a fourth gas. He has plus one on the way for some reason. It's a very weird build by him overall, but in general, the idea is if the processes are start doing stuff on the fly, 
even if they know the game, chances are, as long as you're playing a safe and solid without too many macro errors, you're just gonna be ahead. And if this goes for Max Pex, who's like a 6.6k Protoss, this will surely also go for your um, Diamond uh, 1 opponent. Um, even though some Diamond players say they do have GM knowledge, it's not actually the case. So... I'm gonna... T I, I just want the one, la the one last thing that I want to show you guys is how little gas they can have at the start of the game. Because they need to defend this on one gas, otherwise they can't afford anything. So obviously this is a little bit different because he made an extra Zealot. So his Nexus is even later, usually the Nexus would go down now. Um, with a 2 gate, but it goes down even later, so now he makes a Nexus. And note that he didn't start Warp Gate yet, and he still doesn't have 150 gas. So now he starts Warp Gate, and you already know, if they start Warp Gate especially, they can't be a Stargate. We go into the main base to check, if there's a Stalker, you know the tech is a the way. So, he actually does have a Robo. Ah, yeah, he does have a Robo, okay. At this moment in time. But it's after, yeah, it's exactly, it's after the warp gate. It's basically when I said it's not possible to have a star gate. For a, for a second there, I thought I was completely wrong. That would have weirded me out. But yeah, now he's getting a robo, so this is very, very late. Remember, Stargate, robos both take a very long time. Twilight Council, Dark Shrine especially takes a very long time, so don't be afraid. Uh, don't make too many early spore crawlers if you're 12 pooling. Don't try to rush out if your opponent is aggressive. Don't try to rush out your third base. Rather, try to get up the drone count safely. And then take a little bit of a later third. If you guys want, you can even go for some two base tech if you really feel uh, like it's necessary. Um, yeah, so so that's so that's pretty much everything. Um, if you ever get the surround on a zealot and you have uh, four zerglings per zealot, or rather more than four zerglings per zealot, you are just gonna win. So I want you guys to, to, to basically test out okay, when, when can I surround the zealots? When can't I surround the zealot? One little micro tip is also that. From the if you get it completely surrounded, you can micro back the zerglings after it gets hit once or twice, and then it will survive. That's uh, super nice. If you actually get the surround, what do you do? You can try targeting down the pylon, but in general, if you get the surround, the game is just over. You can see that in all of these games, I barely did any damage, or basically just no damage whatsoever, and I still ended up in fine positions in all three games. Very often, there you're also just gonna get the cyber core. So for example, right right here, for you guys, I would suggest the easiest is always to kill the most exposed building, so the one the furthest away from the wall, in this case the Cybercore. Uh, this, for example, would easily, uh, you can easily fit in five Zerglings, but I would, at, at the very least, pre-hotkey four Zerglings. I don't have this yet. So pre-hotkey four Zerglings, the way it's hotkey right now, and then these four Zerglings, just let them hit the Cybercore. Have the other Zerglings right on the opposite side of where the other Zerglings are, and then if he ever leaves, you can try to go for this round. I'm gonna try to resume. I assume it's broken. And yeah, my Starcraft is gonna crush. <laughs> okay, let's put on the library then. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any follow-up questions for how to 12 pool, uh, please let me know in the comments. If you have any other, um, any other questions in general, any other bills that you'd like to see me cover. If you guys enjoyed the ZVP week in general, let me know. Make sure to subscribe if you wanna support me. Leave me a like. And see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.